Hi everyone, I'm Alan Preston and this is Cooking Without Looking Television Show, Quarantine Cuisine Holiday Edition 2. Yes, hi Alan. Happy holidays and happy holidays to everyone. I'm Annette Watkins coming to you from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Welcome to our show powered by Zoom. Thank you, Annette. Cooking Without Looking is the first real television show to feature people who are blind and visually impaired. Yes, and today we have a special treat for you. We have Regina Mitchell. She is all the way from Las Vegas. She is classically trained chef. She's traveled all over the world, training CEOs and heads of state on, on how to cook. And today she's going to let us know what she's been up to and also make her mom's favorite stuffing. And we will have representative from Florida Vision, Vision Technology to show us some of the fantastic new technology that helps those of us who are blind and visually impaired prepare these wonderful holiday fixings. Yes, and we also have Sylvia is back. Sylvia Simpson Perez. She's back from the Mississippi State University and she's gonna give us some holiday tips that will help the visually impaired the blind and even those that are sighted. So we're excited about that. And Annette, we also have Ralph Smith and his wife Wanda, who are both blind, and they talk about how they split the cooking responsibilities during the holidays. We'll also take your live audience questions from our, for our guests. Now, I'd like to introduce you to Chef Regina Mitchell. Regina? Oh, Regina, are you there? Uh, are we having a little technical difficulties here? He just needs to unmute. Ah. Okay. Can you hear me? Thank yes. you. Yes. Okay. Is Thank that you, so you Regina? This is me, Ellen. How are you? I'm doing just fine, Regina. Uh, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I am Chef Regina Mitchell, and um, I am blind. I have what's called a very rare eye disease, and it's called bilateral canuditis, where both of the eyes, the central, have um, active inflammatory cells. So I don't have a peripheral vision, nor do I have depth perception, and nor can I see things. Um, or, or details. Um, but before my blindness, I was employed by MGM Grand Hotel and Resorts here in Las Vegas, and I worked with them in the hospitality industry for many years, and I worked with lots of amazing people that you guys are probably all know by name. But prior to that, I lived in Seattle, and I went to culinary school, and um, I did culinary school so I was uh, eligible for a fellowship abroad and I studied under the master chefs in Scotland, England, uh, London, Spain, Rome, Paris <laughs> and then ended in Cannes, um, came back to the States, worked at um, Emma Lagasse and then also did some things with Julia Child and then I opened up my own um, company where I did team buildings for CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. Wow. And so, <laughs> and then I, I developed um, uh, eye disease and I couldn't work anymore at the MGM Grand Resorts. So I went to school and at UNLV, got my bachelor's in psychology, minor in neuroscience. And then I decided to go back into my community and start teaching them to cook. And so um, now what I'm doing is I'm uh, one of the instructors at Angela's house at the Mobility Training Center. And I teach blind and visually impaired individuals. And so that's what I do right now. So today uh, I'm going to- Regina, that is truly amazing. And when is this you're gonna turn 25 years old? <laughs> Oh, uh, I did already. I just tried it in November. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I understand 
that you're preparing your mom's favorite stuffing. Tell yes. Yes, I am. Thank you. And she actually okay this this uh, uh, recipe for me to do. This has been a family favorite since I was able to be spoon fed up until about a year ago. And and so we've never really had this recipe on paper. And so she actually went over it with me and now we have it on paper and she doesn't mind sharing it. So it's not a stuffing, but it's a cornbread dressing. And the stuffing is what you put on the inside of the turkey and the stuff and the dressing is what we put on the outside. So it's a, an accompaniment to any meal, Thanksgiving, Christmas, or if you just want to make it as a side dish. So I'll get started. I'll just walk you through some of the steps. Um, the recipe seems very lengthy, but it really isn't. Just that there are some steps that we're going to do. And just by having me on the show, when you get it, it's going to be a break. So don't feel intimidated when you get the recipe. It's not, okay? So the first thing you want to do is um, go into your cornbread make your cornbread because the cornbread takes about 22 minutes and generally while I'm doing the cornbread I do my um, vegetables so I'm just going to pause the cornbread for a moment and I'm going to start the vegetables um, and so I'm going to show you how to do a few things for the vegetables so here I have some vegetables that I already started chopping um, the veggies are onions celery um, and a pepper, a red pepper, yellow pepper, green pepper, and you just chop it, uh, medium, small, medium dice. And so I have some here on my cutting board. And also just to let you know, when you start cooking, you wanna have everything in order. And what we call that in chefery is <laughs> called mise en place. And that means having everything in order. So like I have everything like these little bowls, that way I can have everything we can put into my pan. So right now I have cut, before you all got here, I, I cut just a few vegetables. So I'm just gonna finish rough chopping this just to show you some knife skills really quick and, um, or just to tell you some knife skills. So I'm just chopping this very kind of roughly chopped. My hand is on the very top of the blade. Um, the non-cut side of the blade, the top of it. And I'm just applying some pressure. My hands are up, my fingertips are up because like I always say, you wanna start with 10 and you wanna end with 10. Okay, so I just roughly chop that. Anytime you are using your knife to push your uh, vegetables aside, always use it on the back side, not on the cut side. So I've roughly chopped the Onions, I'm going to put that into my bowl. And now I'm going to cut the celery. And you, the celery, we're going to use about three stalks of celery. And you're just going to slice right down the middle of the rib. So you can feel the middle of the rib. And you want to use the claw method by taking your three fingers in the middle, holding your product and with your thumb and your finger, your, your baby finger, you wanna hold your celery. And with your cutting of the knife, you wanna go up and down motion, like a rocking, a rocking motion. Okay, also you want to secure your cutting board at all times. Make sure your cutting board has a, a stable a rubber mat underneath or the little stable feet underneath it. And your knives, you wanna secure your knife on the side of your cutting board or at the very top of your cutting board. That way, when you go across your board, because we're visually impaired and blind, we won't cut ourselves. So just make sure your, your knife is secured and your cutting board is secured. Okay, so I have in this bowl, onion, celery, and peppers. In this small bowl, I have garlic. I'm going to add the garlic, this bowl of vegetables, into a hot pan. And so anytime you want to saute, make sure you turn your, your uh, pan on first, your uh, stove on first. Well, let me go back. 
for us that are visually impaired and blind, we want to position our, our pans on the stove first, then make sure it's centered. And then we want to turn our gas or fire on, okay? And let that heat up for maybe like a minute because you don't want to cook your oil. You want to pour your oil into a warm to hot pan, okay? So let that go for a couple more seconds. And I have some oil here. I just have regular canola oil, but you can use almond oil, you can use um, olive oil, okay? So I'm just gonna pour some oil in here and get it going. And I'm just going to test it to see if you want to Okay, so as that's coming to um, a heating point, I'm going to jump onto the cornbread. So like I said, it seems like it's a lot of steps, but it isn't. It's just the vegetables, your cornbread, and the stuffing. Mix it together with some corn, I mean with some vegetable stock, and you're good to go. Okay, I can hear that it's sizzling. And I'm going to add the other ingredients. So you can probably hear that this is sizzling. And that's the temperature that you want to have it. So this is set at a medium high. And then we're going to let that cook for about seven to 10 minutes or until it's, it's tender. Okay. Next, I'm going to walk you through the cornbread. This is a very basic cornbread recipe. Um, I have on the recipe an Albers cornmeal, yellow cornmeal, but whatever is in your local region, you can use it, okay? So I'm not going to make it because I already have the cornbread made already, but I'm just going to walk you through the cornbread. It's very simple. It's uh, one cup of cornmeal, one cup of flour, and a tablespoon of baking powder and salt. And what you want to do is place all your dry ingredients in a sifter. It's really important because you want to aerate your flour and uh, cornmeal because you think about it, it's kind of been sitting in your cupboard or on the grocery store shelf. So you just want to wake it up. You just want to aerate it. And all you literally do is put it in your um, strainer or not just strainer, but your sifter and just shake it with your hand over a bowl. Okay. And just shake it and sift it. So you're gonna have all your dry ingredients. Okay, in another bowl, <laughs> we're gonna pretend it's another bowl. You have your wet ingredients, and that's one cup of milk, a third cup of oil, and a beaten egg. And you wanna just whisk that together. Now you're gonna add, so you have two bowls, you're gonna add your wet ingredients to your dry ingredients. And all you're gonna do is just stir it together just to moisten it. Okay, next we have a baking sheet pan, or not a sheet pan, but a baking dish is about eight inch. Um, and if you want to spray it, make sure it's well oiled. I just use this Pam spray. And anytime we want to spray something, we want to spray it like over into our sink. That way it doesn't go all over the place. Or you want to do another method, which is butter and flour. You can do that as well. Okay. I'll put that to the side. And I can hear my veggies starting to kind of come down. The, the noise level is coming down. Okay. Okay. And you can probably hear this. Hopefully, you can hear it. And you want to season your veggies. Um, we're going to just, whatever seasonings you have in your, in your house, I have some garlic salt, I have some pepper, and I have lemon pepper. So I'm going to season real quickly the veggies. And make sure you taste, 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 taste. That's really important to taste everything that you're going to put inside of your dressing. Or you're stuffing, you're making stuffing. Okay. By the way, my house smells amazing. It smells just great. As a matter of fact, we have two stories, so we always make sure we close the 
doors upstairs so that our bedrooms <laughs> don't smell like this, okay? All right, so that's almost ready. Also, it's really important to have, if you don't, to get like little bowls like this to have all of your things ready to go. All right, so next thing, I'm going to tell you what else is going to go in here. Um, you're going to put in some vegetables. Well, I have vegetable stock, or you can add chicken stock. So I'm going to probably use both of these because you want your mixture to be like a wet consistency. So this is what's going to go in there next. And then also, I have some Mrs. Cubison stuffing mix. This is like a dry um, bread, I guess you can say. So that's going to go in there. And so let me just give, show you. Tell you in this bowl, I already made the cornbread. So the cornbread is in there. When the cornbread comes out, you want to put it on a cookie sheet. I'm sorry a baking rack to cool it. Once it's cooled, you want to cut it into cubes, like I have it here. And then with cubes, you just want to break it apart with your fingers. And you want to get more of a like a crumb consistency, not where it's um, looking like flour. You don't want flour. Next, next, you're gonna add your Cubison mix to that and mix that together. You can hear the dressing and you just want to mix that together with your fingers. And then I have some fresh sage or you can use dry sage and I'm going to chop that very small. Now you can use dry sage. Um, when you use dry sage, dry sage is stronger than fresh. So you want to use the double amount of your sage, your fresh sage, as opposed to your dry. Okay. All right. So I put some sage in there. And I think, let's see, the poultry season goes in. So we're going to add some poultry season. And any other seasonings that you have in your house. And you want to mix that together. Next, I'm going to add the, let's see, the chicken broth. And you want to add it maybe like two cups at a time, just to make sure that it's moistened. And I'm going to stir it. OK, so I have a spatula, and I'm just going to stir it together. It's still a little dry. You can probably hear it in the bowl. And so I'm just going to add some more vegetable stock to it. I'm just going to actually add all of this. Okay. So this is a 32 ounce. Uh, I think that's four cups. And I'm just going to mix this together. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to add my veggies in. And once my veggies come in, then I'm going to a bowl, I mean a, a, a baking sheet, spray my baking sheet and pour it into this baking pan. All right. So let's see, I have one in the oven already. So let's see if we can pull that out and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. And so here is the, the finished product. My husband, Stan, who is my sous chef when I was running my own business. <laughs> okay, thank you. So the internal temperature of stuffing or even dressing should be a 165 degree Fahrenheit. And so we tested it and <laughs> this was 170. So <gasps> it's gonna cool down to that. So this is what it looks like. And actually you can make this ahead of time. And then when you get ready to um, serve it, just bring it to room temperature. Okay, that's Mama Sharon's Southern Cornbread Dressing recipe. Hey. Thank you, Chef Regina. That sounds delicious. It's my
my pleasure. And you are absolutely amazing. I like the way you incorporate your sense of smell, your sense of touch, and your hearing to take the place of things you can't see. Yeah. Uh, how, how can we reach out to you for more information? Yes, uh, my email address is Chef RDM, that's C H E F R as in Regina, D as in Denise, M as in Mitchell, at gmail.com. Thank you, Chef Regina. You're welcome. And if those of you in the virtual audience would like Chef Regina's recipe, please go to our website, www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com. If you'd like to stick around a bit, I'm sure our audience would like to ask you some questions in a oh, little bit. absolutely. Absolutely. Peter. Oh, that sounds good. Thank you, Regina. Just listening to your recipe made me so hungry. You did a great <laughs> Thank job. You. You're awesome. Thank you Thank so you. much. It's my pleasure. Yeah, and to continue this awesomeness, we have with us Jose Cintron. Um, yes. Jose, how are you today? I'm doing pretty well. Well, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Jose is with the Florida Vision Technology. I'm just very curious. Are you sighted or are you visually impaired? I am totally blind. I'm visually impaired, just like everybody else here. Okay, well, it's great to have you on our show on this holiday edition. And the reason we brought Jose on today is because so many people that are blind and visually impaired have challenges in the kitchen all the time, but especially during the holidays. Everything is so rushed and, and uh, fast paced. He's going to show us how technology can help you all in the kitchen. So why don't you tell us what you have there, Jose, and how it can can help the blind and visually impaired. Awesome. So today I have a machine made by LVI America um, that's called the MagnaLink Voice 2. And both people who are low vision and totally blind can use this product uh, for tasks that involve reading. Um, so since we're dealing with recipes today, I thought this would be a really cool device to show you guys. So on the table in front of me, I have the machine. It looks like a big speaker. It's about 12 inches tall. Um, it has a handle at the top. It weighs about five pounds, so you can move from room to room. It has a built-in five-hour battery. I just want to show me, you guys. This Jose, excuse me. I'm sorry. It's Renee. We can't see you. There's like a little spinning wheel there. Uh, give me one second. Um, okay, no problem. <laughs> Thanks, Renee, for interjecting because I didn't know if it was just <laughs> or what. Yeah, we have to see that equipment. And I still have no audio, so it looks fine to me. Oh, there you go. There you are, Jose. I love your hat, Jose. Thank you. Cute. Awesome. Thank you. Sorry about that, guys. So no on the desk in front of me, I have the machine. It's about 12 inches tall. Again, it has a handle at the top of it. I can pick Jose, it up. Jose, it's it, it just went out again. When you start talking, it it like went out. Um, geez. Uh, okay. So let's let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna switch the camera to my um. um oh boy. <laughs> uh, technology, right? Um, so, <laughs> killing. Video. I'm just gonna restart the camera real quick, guys. One second. I'm sorry about there that. There you are. There you go. That's okay. Technology, technology. You know. Technology at its finest, right? So you can now use we see now? you. Now we see you. Yes. Okay. So the device is a speaker. It looks like a speaker. At the top, it does have a hand on it, so I could pick it up. I can put it down. It weighs about five pounds. It comes with a five-hour built-in battery. On the back of the device, we have three USB ports that we're able to connect a remote control to it to control the machine. And then with the other two USB ports, we're able to connect a thumb drive where if we have a recipe that's saved on that thumb drive, we're able to go ahead and read it with the machine. And if we take scans, we can save it to that thumb drive that we can read it on a computer. So it's a very useful machine. Um, and it has very little buttons on the side. We have uh, our power button. We have two HDMI ports, so as if I was sighted, I can actually connect this to a monitor where anything I take a picture of or anything that's under the camera, I can see on a monitor. So it's a reading machine and a very low 
go take a video magnifier. Okay. Oh, I love the fact that it's portable and it's lightweight. Yeah, and then it has this remote control that's very tactile. It has six different buttons on it that'll let us manipulate the machine itself. Um, I have a, a knob here that I could do things like adjust this reading speed. Speed 85, 90, 85. For this demonstration, I'm gonna keep it to 80, that way it's not super fast. Speed 80. So we have 80 words per minute. Uh, I'm gonna raise the volume. Volume 85. 90, 95, 100. All right, so it goes up to 100%. I'm going to bring it back down to about 80. Volume 95, 85, 80. So very easy to use. Now, when you want to use the machine, all you do is lift up the arm. Underneath the arm, we have an LED light and a camera. So I'm going to move it to the side so you can see what I'm doing. I have a recipe book here. It's the holiday season, but it's also pumpkin spice season. So I brought a recipe that has pumpkin spice cheesecake. I'm just going to place that document underneath the camera, line it up with the machine. Super easy to do. Jose, it's, the, the video is off again. Okay, one second. Let's refresh that, please. Are we refreshed? Turn it off and on. Uh, are you able to see me now? Um, no, not yet. We have a little circle. Oy. But you know what? Describe it to us as you were describing. That's okay. Yeah, so I'm sorry about that. So I have the document lined up with the machine. It's right underneath. And on the remote control towards the bottom of it, there's an orange tactile square button. I'm going to press that real quick. See the special pumpkin cheesecake. Preheat to 350 degrees ingredients crust. One cup crushed graham crackers, one teaspoon cinnamon. And as you hear, it's reading the recipe. Three tablespoons granulated sugar filling. Three eight Now I can pause that. Soften. I can resume it. Cream cheese, one one cup. I can navigate this document uh, character by character, word by word, line by line. And if I was cited and have this connected to a third party monitor, I can see the text up on the screen. It's a super easy machine that allows both low vision users and blind users to read recipes in the kitchen. Um, if they're in Barnes and Nobles or a bookstore and they're going through a recipe book, they can take a picture of it, save it to their USB thumb drive and have access oh. to it later. Super cool machine for reading different recipes and other types of That's literature. That's great, Jose. I have a question. Um, I think you've probably already answered about having the thumb drive, but do you do this mostly in real time or you're saying you could actually take photos of each page and use it later? It stores them. So I could take a photo and use it in real time, or I could take a photo, save it to that thumb drive and use it later either on the machine itself or I can go ahead and use it on a computer. It saves as a docs wow. file. Wow, and how much storage is in there? There is no storage on this device itself. So if you're not saving something to a thumb drive, it's not gonna save any information. Okay, so you just get the thumb drives are easy to come by, inexpensive, yeah. and expensive, and you can put as much as you want on there. Yeah, but you know, if you're in the kitchen, you know, if you have this stuff in the kitchen on your counter, on the table, and you wanna read a recipe, you don't need a thumb drive for that. All you need is the document to place underneath the device, take a picture of it, and then it reads the document right there. You can play slash pause that document, and you can navigate it line by line. So if you need to go through the ingredients or the steps, uh, you know, individually, you're able to do that. I like that even better than a cookbook. Let's say, you know, let's say someone's visually impaired, they would use a magnifier or a CCT machine and, and try to see it. Yeah. This would be a lot easier to see. That's yeah, and it takes up less space, like you said, a CCTV or a, a video desktop magnifier. This is a lot oh, smaller huge. than a video and desktop magnifier. That one has a handle and everything. So do you have anything else yeah. you, you can show us today for the blind and visually impaired? Uh, well, today I pretty much just want to stick with the, the Magdalene voice too, because I thought it was a great way to yes, read recipes. Yes, it does. It does definitely it correlates with the holidays and reading recipes at, at Christmas or anytime. Fantastic. So much for joining us. I want you to stick around though and to the end if you can please and answer. Yeah, awesome. answer any questions that the audience Thank you. Very articulate and very clear about what you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us today. 
All right. Now we'd like to speak with our very own Ralph Smith and his wife Wanda. Alan? Who are both blind people. Excuse me. Excuse me, Alan. Um, I don't have Ralph here. Um, they, oh, they no. are here right now. Let's see if we can get Sylvia. We, Sylvia, let's let's Sylvia. talk about some ideas here. Hi, everyone. Sylvia. Hi, Sylvia. Hi, Sylvia. How is everyone today? We are. Happy holidays. Do you have some tips for us on things that you like to make for the holiday season? Well, I love to make fudge, I'll say. But I'm going to take some things that I have learned from Chef Regina, mm -hmm. who is just fantastic. And I'm going to tell you that I made Mama Sharon's cornbread dressing for Thanksgiving, and it was delish. Mm -hmm. Tell girl. Wow. Yes, it was fantastic. So I love a few things that I have learned from Chef Regina. Mison plus, this is a whole new term for me, but it's a concept that all of us who are visually impaired and sighted should be using. And I love that, that evidently it's a concept that all good chefs use because we all talk about it in, for people who are low vision and blind. And that is me plus everything in its place it's really important that when you're cooking especially when you're blind or visually impaired that you have a place that you know where everything is i like to talk about working over a tray because if something spills over the tray not all over the floor all over the stove etc because you know i have made those errors my husband can attest to that uh and um, having things in your, your space that you're working in so you can reach it. And I love where, you know, that Regina talks about working with things that are ready ahead of time. So measure out your flour, measure out your sugar, whatever it is you're using, measure that out and put it in those little bowls in advance. Because then you don't have the frustration of looking all over for something and then ooh, ooh, accidentally discovering you don't even have that and you're halfway through the recipe and now you got to figure out how to get that missing ingredient. And oftentimes a lot of holiday things I make, you need to make them quick like fudge. That's one of those things if, if you don't make it like quick and you get behind, it's going to harden and you're going to, it's just not going to work out. So Mise Plus, love it. Working with the bowls, love it. And Mise Plus, I kind of like the uh, magnetic knife holders, magnetic utensil holders. Uh, you may be able to see over my shoulder, I have two of them over my two main work areas. And I love to work underneath a, or over the top of a tray. Uh, I've got two of them right there in my counter. Yeah, that's cool. The other thing is, I am sure all of you heard Chef Regina cutting like a maniac. Chop, 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 chop. Most of us are not that quick. So um, it really does take practice and skill. And she covered some safety techniques. Um, if you're not comfortable with a knife, one of the things I think is, is, and I've worked with a lot of people on, is using a little chopper. You can buy one of those little mini choppers for $15, $20. And then you have to cut very minimal and you can pop those in a chopper and does the same thing. Those are great you tips. One of those little mini choppers so, like this one here that you put I can't in. see, but yes. probably. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh man, I've had uh, this is about the third or fourth one I've had. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple other things I'll say is um, Chef Regina talked about mixing. I think it's really great to kind of use an extra big bowl to mix so stuff doesn't go out the side you know that's one of my favorite things to do and then I'm gonna say that I love the way Chef Regina talked about cooking today because she makes it so sensory she was listening for the sound of the sizzle and you can hear boiling and all of those things so we listen touching to see if the texture was right, if she had that cornbread crumbled in the right way, so touching your food, smelling, 
smelling to see when do you think something is done. And if you cook something enough, there's a magic point where you know it's done. I was making um, rice pudding the other day and there's a place where, and, and I've noticed this with anything I make that's sweet, where you have milk and sugar, there's a place where the smell comes that you know that's it. It's, it's, it's almost there. It's turning into that right texture. And then taste, taste, taste. That's what Chef Rodina told us to taste, 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 because that's what chefs do. They're always tasting. So by the time they're serving the food, they already ate a whole meal, but they can assure that it tastes delicious. <laughs> So that's what I've got to share today. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Sylvia. We want you to stick around. We might have some questions from our audience and uh, even the participants today. Those are great tips. Thank you. It's very observant. Appreciate that. Good check. Uh, well, we really had a great time today. Many thanks to our guests. And uh, we'll, be coming, we'll be coming to you every second Friday of the month. Our next Cooking Without Looking TV show, uh, Quarantine Cuisine Edition, powered by Zoom, will be Friday, January 8th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please listen to our Cooking Without Looking TV show podcast on Pandora, iTunes, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, podbean.com and more. Our website is www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com. Thank you and happy holidays. Happy holidays, happy holidays. holidays everyone. Happy holidays. <laughs> I guess we can open it up to our virtual audience now, right? Yes, 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 our virtual audience. We must have questions. I can't see anything. I've still got a blank screen. <laughs> I can start it off. I have a question for Regina. Yes. Regina, can you hear me? I can't hear you. This yes. is Annette. Regina, I loved your recipe. Recipe. I want to try it. I never. Made oh, thank you. Annette. Yeah, I never made stuffing with cornbread. Believe it or not, I don't know why, but um, <laughs> I wanted to. Okay, that was the first time. Yeah, I wanted to know what happens if you don't sift it. I know if it's sitting on. The shelf, I'm sorry. What happens if you don't sift your cornmeal? I know you said it's sitting on the shelf or in the box for a while, but what happens if you don't? How does it affect the? Recipe? If you don't, it tends to be just a little. Um, flatter it won't be as fluffy but it, it won't change the the taste of it at all it's just the presentation but it doesn't really matter because you're going to put it in, inside of a dressing form but i still like to see and feel that it's yeah. it's it's expanding sure. and it's beautiful feel it and those that are visually impaired might be able to see and eat with yes. their eyes so that's a good point thank you uh, Regina, will you share if you don't have You're a welcome. sifter, how can you do it? Yeah. Oh, um, you could do it with your hands. You just um, fluff it up with your hands. You know I keep filling it. You and just, all you want to do is wake it up. So you're just, just going to wake up your flour, um, baking powder, salt, and cornmeal. Or you can just use a spoon and two forks would do the same way. Oh, good. That's simple. Or whisk. You can use a whisk. Great hacks. Great hacks. All right. Any other questions <laughs> out there? I'm getting room now. I can't focus. He's not home. I'll ask another question. Regina, how do you feel about the use of parchment paper? You mentioned um, using Pam or butter and flour, but how do you feel about parchment paper? Oh, that's perfect. All you have to do is um, fit it to your pan. Um, you can even have it hanging over the side of your pan, like just get it inside your pan and have the edges off to the side 
So when the cornbread is baked, you can just lift it out and set it on your uh, wire rack. But that's just for your cornbread, not for the dressing. Okay. I have another question for you too. I wanna to ask you so many things. Okay, well, all right. So you said you were sighted and then you, you don't yes. have vision anymore. And so now you're teaching people that are blind and visually impaired. Yes. I have basically two questions actually. Okay. One is, did you have to go to school to learn how to cook as a blind and visually impaired person or you just did it through experience and now you're sharing it with other people? That would be my first question. The second one is, what is the biggest obstacle that you feel that blind and visually impaired people face in your class when they start to you know, learn how to cook? Okay, so I initially went to culinary school as a sighted person. And so I did all of my professional cooking as a sighted person. Right. Then I became blind and had to figure life out. Right. <laughs> and then I went to Angela's House um, Mobility and Training Center, and they taught me the blind skills that I needed. So I, I was able to to put the blind skills that I had, coupled it with the professional skills that I had. And so that's why I'm able to teach low vision and blind individuals. Very good. Okay, and then I feel that the biggest obstacle that blind and low vision individuals have when they first come to the cooking class, is just that fear of the stove top yeah. or the fear of oven because um, uh, they don't want to get burned. And so we just teach them ways to maneuver and to navigate around the heating sources and their baking source. So with long gloves, cooking on the side of your saute pan, opening the oven on the side, um, placement of your pot to your um, stovetop. So we just teach them those basic skills so that they won't have that fear and that they will soon overcome that fear. Plus, very good. Thank you. Because I think I heard, I listened to your podcast and I think you also said, if I'm getting the right podcast, I listen to so many of the Cooking Without Looking podcasts, but I think you said there also that for them to try to gain confidence, yes. you had them do other things before doing things that require a stove or an oven. Absolutely. So salads and desserts you can expound on that if you like yeah so when they have that that fear that obstacle that's in their way um i try to still encourage them to come into the come back into the kitchen to make the kitchen their friend again and doing stuff like salads or working with a blender um to do like herbaceous um sauces say like a pesto or a chimichurri sauce or uh, things like that. They can make ice cream, they can make salads, um, they can do uh, vinaigrettes. So I teach them how to do their own vinaigrettes. And so we start up with the basics like that. Thank you, Regina. You're welcome. Regina, you're amazing. It is wonderful to have you. Oh, I hope we can have you back again soon. Okay, it'll be my pleasure and thank you. Absolutely. Well, that was absolutely amazing. What are you going to make for this holiday season? Well, <laughs> I don't know yet, but I am certain that it will be amazing. I don't know if I can top my Thanksgiving dinner, which was a sake marinated sea bass with mm. a coconut curry sauce and Thai jasmine rice. So I have to talk that for things for Christmas. Mm. <laughs> that <sounds> good. <laughs> Alan, you're a bachelor. That's everything makes your mouth water, doesn't it? It certainly does. Yes. Anything that I don't have to cook myself is absolutely <laughs> delicious, believe me. That's, sounds good. I carry my own too. And although it's kind of impractical for me to cook a turkey. Uh, I could potentially do a turkey breast, and I just might do that. Yeah, absolutely. Or you can do a Cornish game hen. Yeah. I could, yes. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are wow. small and easy to handle. Yeah, very, very beautiful. They cook quickly and they take on amazing flavors. Oh, so she was on her time. Grocery store, you'll find that the people there may help you with Regina. some wonderful. Regina, almost anything you could imagine. We don't have to remain traditional. I mean, turkey is great. I love turkey. Oh my God. I could eat it. Well, I do eat it frequently, actually. But there are other options. There are ham. Or, and, yeah, uh, you can do a salmon. Salmon. Actually, I have some mahi in my freezer. You do some mahi. Okay, for, for Christmas. Melanie, you're so cute. Um, I, <laughs> I, I had to dig this out from. Uh, from the costume thing back there. I've got a whole Santa suit. In fact, I've got the wig too, but you guys told me I shouldn't wear well, it because it looks funny. That's good, yeah. but I need your personality. Who wants, who wants to cook? I want to see you cook some. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> with the wig on? Not with the wig. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, then, and then there's my mask. I thank my yeah. This is my political statement. <laughs> Well, for those of you who are, are not sighted, like a lot of our audience, I'm wearing a mask with pictures of Mickey Mouse. Like, okay. It's my, my political statement. I suppose what I should do is I should put it over the speaker over here so all these little corona germs. Mm. Oh, and I didn't tell everybody. I'm in West Palm Beach, Florida. Oh, I know, and that you said you're in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, it's kind of cloudy here, but uh, the temperature isn't too bad. How is it down in Fort Lauderdale? I don't know. I don't have a window here. I can't tell. But <laughs> earlier, it's just perfect. Time. You want to be in Florida from like you know October to May, and then it's time to go <laughs> yeah. somewhere else, Minneapolis, maybe. <laughs> Well, yeah. here in Henderson, Nevada, it's overcast and a little cool outside. By a little cool, how, how cool is it out there? How cool is it? 62 degrees or so. Wow. Okay, that's, that's not too bad. Yeah, a little cool. Living in Las Vegas, everybody thinks that there's like a I know. <laughs> next door or something. But yeah. they actually have some beautiful homes and a lot of residential areas there. Mm -hmm. I know we had people from San Jose, California watching. Imagine it's nice out there. Okay. No, they're just more sitting so on the golf. Gwen, Minneapolis watching, but I bet it's cold up there. Mm -hmm. I don't know how cold it is, but I bet it's cold. But then again, it's supposed to be cold at Christmas time, isn't it? Yes, it should be cold. And snow. I kind of miss having snow at Christmas. The only snow I get is what, what I can find on television. <laughs> well, I think we should wrap this up. We have any other questions from our audience? Or even if, Regina, if you have any questions, or Sylvia, if you have any comments or questions? Renee, anybody out there? <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> Not seeing everybody, but we're still having fun. Yes. All right. Well, um, once again, if you'd like to come and visit our website, uh, it is www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress. Dot com. And uh, we're, we're seen on, oh my golly, all kinds of things, Spotify and, 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 and I can't even remember all of them now and I don't have a page Hello, over there. Proben, um, iTunes, just anywhere. You just put in a search engine of any of those and it'll pop up. Even if you do like a Google search and say, where can I find Cooking Without Looking podcasts? And it'll give you different locations. And it's great. Yes. There's over 50 episodes now. And I'll tell you, I've, 
I listen to those. If you ever feel like a little blue or down because it's the holidays or whatever, listening to some, some of the, while the people speak and their inspirational stories and things they've been through and how they cope with their vision loss, it's very inspiring. And, and you just feel like you could do anything after that. You know, it's the sky's the limit. And thank you. Yes, for bringing absolutely it. right. And that, it, it is a wonderful thing. And you can find it almost any place. And uh, that's what I did when I, when I look for it. I go to Google and I just put in cooking without looking. And it comes up. Um, again, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Regina. You were just absolutely amazing. And I'd like to say a big thank you to all the people that helped make our show possible. Our uh, Cooking Without Looking Quarantine Cuisine <laughs> Holiday Edition two, three, two. <laughs> let's, let's see what <laughs> Jose... Zoom. And, oh, let's and our next what... one will be on... Oh, our, our next show is going to be on Friday, January 8th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, there we are. Pa, Pandora, iTunes, Spotify, Apple Podcast. By the way, I got a huge print here. <laughs> uh, hey, let's let's have a, a word from Jose Cintron. Uh, he, how how yes. do we reach? How do we uh, reach you, uh, Jose? So our website is floridareading.com, and that's all spelled out: F L O R I D A reading R E A D I N G dot com. Uh, our eight hundred number is one 981 five one one nine. And if you're interested in any type of assistive technology products, whether it's a reading machine or uh, uh, accessible gloves for the kitchen, um, uh, cutting boards, uh, liquid indicators, um, you could send me an email at jose at floridareading dot com. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, uh, Regina. Have you got any parting words? Well, I want to thank Renee for um, inviting me to the show today. I really appreciate it. I had an amazing time. Thank you. And I look forward to coming back again. And happy holidays to everyone. Happy holidays. And happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy cooking. Everyone well, should get out and try something. <laughs> cooking. Have and a, a big day. virtual hug to yes. everyone. Thank there. you. And, and a shameless grandchild uh, <laughs> picture. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Have a wonderful yeah. holiday, everyone. Yes, you too, Renee. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Bye, Renee. Bye, Alan. Bye, bye Sylvia. Bye, bye Alan. Bye. And bye, Annette. Thank you. Nice meeting everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>